We now have six entries in the Black Ops franchise, and for some people, these are their favorite Call of Duty games. I'm Ornery, and today we are ranking every single Black Ops game. These will be the entire games as a whole, meaning we will be taking campaign, multiplayer, zombies, and whatever else these games have to offer into consideration. But go ahead and comment your favorite Black Ops game as we get started. Most Call of Duties built their arsenal, gameplay, and most importantly, setting off of a campaign. Well, when it was announced that Black Ops 4 was shipping without a campaign, this gave it an identity crisis that in turn was responsible for making it one of the weaker Call of Duties in the series. Now, I for one wasn't the biggest fan of this game, hence why it's the last spot on this list. But I wouldn't go as far as saying it's like downright horrible, but it's just not good. We can start with the multiplayer, which plays way differently than many other Call of Duties for two big reasons. The first is that the health regeneration is now a manual stim to heal your player, which is tweaking the fundamental element to Call of Duty that we really just didn't need any changing and also just ruined the entire flow and pace of the game. And the other major gameplay change that I guess really wasn't a change because it was kind of like the norm at the time was the specialist system. I think the specialist abilities were a cool concept but I think just worked better in a game with jetpacks. I think it just kind of fit that whole like chaotic gameplay way better. But in turn we also had a very slow TTK that made the game feel even more different on top of those other two changes which just like ruined the whole entire experience for me. But still this game did have an awesome camo grind so i guess that was redeeming for the multiplayer on to zombies where we had two launch maps being voyage and nine i do want to say that nine is easily my favorite map of this game and it's not even really all that close whatsoever nine is a perfect blend between standard and easy zombies map but with just the right amount of crafting buildables and secrets to explore the only downside is that it just exists on the black ops 4 zombies experience and what i really want to highlight here is that the perk system overhaul being potentially one of the worst decisions in all of zombies history now you basically equip your perks ahead of time to a designated perk slot that you then buy and can also get like a mega version of like each perk and the idea here was that this was going to eliminate crutch perks but instead just created more the reason i say that is a lot of these perks were just downright horrible and only like maybe one or two are worth using in each class and aside from perks this is the first track zombies experience with loadouts and that's just not a zombies game to me most specifically we spawn in with a specialist that has a cooldown which is just like always extremely broken no matter which one you pick and i'm not mad at them existing it should just be something that you have to like build or acquire first but as far as all the other maps go dead of the night and ancient evil are the only ones that i think are worth playing but still if i'm coming back to this game i'm only gonna play nine it's really just the gameplay changes that keep this from being a good zombies game there is one last decent part about black ops 4 and that is blackout blackout has been discussed on this channel a few times so i'm sorry if i repeat myself ahead of time we know this is call of duty's first attempt at a battle royale and it honestly did a pretty good job at scratching that itch unfortunately it was just overshadowed by all the other battle royale games going on at the time and it wasn't really bad by any means it just felt a little empty and vanilla if you will later on with fun events and the addition of alcatraz black up became more digestible and fun but eventually would be eclipsed by warzone which we all know was deemed like blackout irrelevant however you can still play blackout today if you really want to there's a lot to be said about Cold War, and I want to start with the zombies. As the next installment after Black Ops 4, the Cold War zombies experience took an extremely, like, arcade approach, and it wasn't necessarily bad, but for sure took a step outside the box for the zombies players were, like, used to or really just expecting at the time. Loadouts, kill streaks, broken wonder weapons, and countless get out of jail free cards are present to make this a non stop onslaught of whatever round you wanted to make it to. On top of these changes to the formula, this also has to be one of the worst collections of maps in a zombies game. I personally have no desire to come back and try any of these post-launch cold war zombies map and that's because dime machine is just way ahead of all of them and even that isn't like some fan favorite map for many players it just happens to be the best map in the game we also can't overlook outbreak as well which was an open world zombies experience which i'll have to say is just like why another mode i've talked about on this channel it's really just nothing to write home about and i know some people really enjoyed it but to me i just saw this as a mode to take resources away from the round based zombies experience that it desperately needed cold war actually had a campaign unlike black ops 4 and this one is pretty Pretty dang good. Very action packed and introducing some brand new characters that a lot of people enjoyed. Definitely one of the better campaigns in the franchise and I think most of the community would agree with that. As far as multiplayer goes, this was sort of like you didn't know what you had until it was gone situation. It, like Zombies Mode, was also going for an arcade like gunplay that was a nice switch up from the realism that Modern Warfare 19 had just before, but to me it just felt like it was missing something and I really can't put my finger on it. I think like Modern Warfare 23, the post launch content did help this game out tremendously. Not that it was like plague 
plagued with a ton of bad maps it just didn't really have any like bangers at launch but post launch gave us several remakes that everyone was on board with cold war was also the first black ops game to launch under the live service model and i, I think cold war was still adapting and trying to learn from this newfound format and i think its multiplayer definitely took some hits because of that i genuinely want to know people's opinion on cold war because this is one of those games i really just don't know how to feel about all i can say is i know i enjoy the rest of the games on this list more this next entry is extremely painful to me. Black Ops 3 is kind of all over the place when it comes to good and bad, but let's go ahead and start with the bad first. This is easily the worst Black Ops campaign, and it is just like not even a competition. I actually may have taken no campaign over this garbage. You play as a super soldier, and to me, there really wasn't any context about what you're doing or why you're even doing it. Then it takes this plot twist turn that wasn't much of a twist, and then tries to act smart by being confusing and edgy, which is just not the kind of stuff we need in a COD campaign. There's a ton of videos out there that claim that like the black ops 3 campaign is just like smarter than you think which i think is just like not true if you're gonna go back and play cod campaigns just skip out on this one please on the multiplayer where this is the last installment to use jetpack movement and i'll go ahead and say that this is the best installment with jetpack movement i'm not saying i enjoy this movement system but this is just the way to do it if it's going to exist instead of the exo movement this is the thruster pack which is much more mild we have a pretty good map selection that also helps a lot and they're kind of like built with this movement system in mind so it's pretty fluid this was also also the very first COD to have specialist operators in it and at the time was a fun and like neat idea but another aspect that makes this game not feel like a Call of Duty. I think this was trying to like ride the come up of the other hero shooters that were coming out at the time and I don't think it necessarily backfired but I also don't think it added much to the game either. This multiplayer was a good time and definitely refined the jetpack mechanics of advanced warfare but still not the greatest multiplayer experience out there. But let me get one thing straight and that this is hands down the greatest zombies experience of all time. It may be a big statement but please just hear me out. Shadows of Evil was our launch map and at the time was hated and tarnished at launch. But after a little bit more understanding and context, this has later become a lot of people's favorite map of all time. I mean, bro, we had Jeff Goldblum as a voice actor for crying out loud. What is not to love? We had just the right amount of innovation without straying away from the zombie formula and that formula had only been getting better and better from title to title. Gobblegums are one thing that come to mind as like something you're just like, wait, what is this? And then shortly after understanding, you're like, wait, this is like an awesome new feature. This is where the game got a little bit easier if you knew what you were doing doing and kind of started like exploiting it really. But still not quite as easy what it has become today. Taking the story to new heights and also bringing in some of the greatest easter eggs in the franchise as well. And we haven't even started to talk about the DLC for this game. Der Eisendrak is another juggernaut gunning for the greatest map of all time slot. Zetsubo is my personal favorite in the game and it's also listed as like the worst of this game but still really good. Gorod Krovi is one of the most difficult maps in the franchise and gives you so much gratification just for setting it up. And then you have Revelations which is an absolute cluster of every map without being overwhelming or trying too hard. And then there's Zombies Chronicles, which is probably the greatest thing to ever be added to not only Black Ops 3, but any Call of Duty ever. Remastering eight beloved Zombies classics, we now had Kino, Ascension, Shangri-La, Moon, Verruckt, Shinonuma, Noct, and Origins. Not only was this being played on modern hardware, but the best engine Zombies had ever been played on as well. This is the ultimate package for Zombies, and we haven't even dived into custom Zombies either. This might already be the greatest Zombies experience for any player, but if you have a PC, you will actually never run out of content to enjoy. Steam Workshop is a treasure trove of ideas made by the community and only adds more to this already masterpiece of a zombies experience. Unfortunately, the rest of this game is the only thing keeping me from putting it any higher on this list. I'll be totally honest, I almost hate how much I love Black Ops 6 right now. I hope I don't regret putting this at number 3, and maybe it's the new media high I'm writing, but Black Ops 6 has blown me away with what it's accomplished at launch. I have a review of Black Ops 6 already published, so if you've watched that already, this is about to be a little bit of regurgitation, so please bear with me. We can start with multiplayer, which with the movement combined with balanced gunplay has widened the skill gap to truly let the better player win in most engagements. Prestige system is back, and weapon regression has been simplified to what it has been in the golden era of COD. The creative class and gunsmith are the best they've ever Ever been in several years. The only real complaint about this game's multiplayer are the maps. It's a hot talking point right now, but the maps right now are just not doing it for me, and I would go as far and say the whole entire community. We are just genuinely so desperate for more content post launch. But I will say, if one thing's gonna lack in a game, I would much rather it be the maps rather than the gameplay itself. But since this gameplay is amazing, this is carrying the entire game as of launch. The camo grind is back and as good as ever, going back to the whole headshot format, which I love and also hate, and that is for any gun aside from shotguns and sniper. This 
this is a fun grind you can casually do in the background while playing the game naturally but for those shotguns and snipers i just see this as like way too tedious and kind of like discouraging me from doing it i don't think they'll change it but that's something that a lame like me just isn't dedicated for but this camo grind transfers into zombies where we have another dedicated grind that is critical kills which are basically headshots if you like zombies a lot you can easily do this just by using said gun for a handful of games and you'll honestly have them in no time as far as zombies itself in my review i think i was actually way 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 too harsh on this mode i've been having a really good time playing zombies in black ops 6. it still took the whole cold war template which i know was like polarizing for many and myself included but refined it to make it a little more traditional terminus specifically is the closest we've been to a traditional zombies experience in a very long time opening and setting up the map feels gratifying because there's actually a setup unlike all the other maps we've had compare that to liberty falls where we have a much more like spoon-fed experience and i actually don't see that as a bad thing especially when you consider the camo grind because like you kind of need a map just like this to like just mess around in and grind and even aside from the camo grind this map is more difficult than i've given it credit for before like past round 20 the abominations and manglers just start going crazy there's just like a ton of them all around the map on the contrary there are a lot of things that counter these like triple pack a punch field upgrades lethals and kill streaks seriously i just don't know why they brought the chopper gunner back that's like the one thing about this that's just like what the hell anyways we now have gobble gums that are back which is awesome but there's also augments which are like tiers that were unlocked in cold war for your perks and aats and this kind of gives the game a little bit more customization which i was weary of but it, it, it's grown on me i'm not gonna lie I, and i said this in my review like we said with multiplayer as well with zombies the post-launch content for this could go absolutely crazy that is if it's done correctly Correctly. And we can finish with the campaign, and since this game is still very new, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm going to keep it short and sweet. But this campaign is seriously one of the greatest campaigns in COD history. I'm not, I know that sounds wild, but like, it's true. Taking just the right amount of experimentation while helping it remain true to the franchise, this game's campaign is not only beautiful, but has a great story, and also has some unforgettable missions that make these missions feel like way completely different than each other. Like, no one level plays exactly the same as the other one. There's always like some unique element to explore. Most people think of a campaign as like sort of an afterthought for the Call of Duty games, but this one is like, I would almost go as far to say a focal point. It is potentially a 10 out of 10 COD campaign. For many people, this is their favorite Call of Duty at all time, and I'm not mad at that idea, but it's just not my personal favorite. Don't get me wrong, this game is near perfect and was an instant classic, and let me tell you why. This multiplayer was responsible for catapulting competitive COD to the mainstream and paved the road for what CWL and CDL have become today. That's because this game introduced League Play, which if you watch my best thing about every Call of Duty video, sorry for the spoiler. League Play gave everyone a shot at putting their skill to the test for an in-game rank to show off to your friends. As far as the multiplayer itself, this had some of the community's most beloved maps. Raid, Hijacked, and Standoff have gone down to some of the best maps in Call of Duty history. Pair that with some amazing gunplay, this was possibly the most perfect of any other Call of Duty at the time. We even got like a wave of trick shotters since the DSR was an absolute peak for sniping. Bringing in the pick 10 system for creative class is the cherry on top and this is just like one of the best multiplayers. Not even just for Call of Duty, but just like any online multiplayer game ever. Just a great experience. On to campaign where I want to immediately tip my hat off to the fact this was the very first COD to implement any any type of like decision making in a COD campaign. This in turn had multiple endings for the game, which made an already awesome campaign very replayable, which how many COD campaigns can you really say are like replayable? But another leg that carries this game is the zombies. I've already voiced how I think Black Ops 3 is the greatest zombies experience out there, but Black Ops 2 holds its own in this race as well. Although there was a rocky start with Transit, which I actually really enjoyed, however the community did not. Then we got Die Rise, which once again, I actually really enjoyed, but the community did not. But then we got banger after banger for Matt. Mob of the Dead experimented a little bit with the whole afterlight system and put zombies in an extremely fun and unique setting being the prison. Then we had Buried, which you guessed it, everyone also loved, but capped this game off with the greatest zombies map of all time, and that is Origins. And Origins is every bit of a map that you could just consider way, way, way ahead of its time. With these maps came a collection of Easter eggs that really took the zombie storyline to the moon, no pun intended, and cemented Black Ops 2 zombies as an essential pillar to the zombies franchise, and had we not gone through the short trial and error phase at launch, we would not have seen the success that Zombies has had since. All of these modes work together to create one of the best Call of Duties we've ever seen. 
After the commercial success of Infinity Ward's Modern Warfare 2, when it was announced that Treyarch was launching a new title called Black Ops, I don't think anyone was prepared for what was in store. The previous Treyarch COD was World at War, which don't get me wrong, this was a great game all around. However, this game's multiplayer was a copy-paste of COD 4, which necessarily isn't a bad thing, but certainly unoriginal. However, Black Ops 1 changed that forever. Black Ops 1 stood on its own and really gave Treyarch some identity that created the entire argument of Infinity Ward versus Treyarch. And we can start with the multiplayer. This multiplayer tweaked the progression just enough and created a system we haven't seen return. The COD point system allowed you to unlock items when you wanted to without having to hit a level cap. And if you wanted more COD points, you could enter wager match and gamble them to test your luck in some party games. This progression system also allowed for way more customization that we had ever seen in Call of Duty and was continuing to build off the success of Modern Warfare 2 by keeping that arcadey gameplay, but toning it down just enough to still feel like COD but also its own game at the same time. And the maps are as good as ever and some is here which is my personal contender for one of my favorite maps of all time. Campaign is at all time high and this one introduced beloved characters like Mason and Woods and this game also brought in some of that grit and I guess like severity that World at War had captured perfectly. Once again bringing in that Treyarch identity I was talking about. This campaign told a mysterious and sometimes just the right amount of confusing story while also implementing real historical figures was just a very great avenue of creating a Call of Duty. And we all know World at War also introduced zombies and remember at the time this was just like an afterthought mode. Black Ops 1 took that afterthought and created a behemoth for modern gaming. All these maps are great but I don't want to say are necessarily better than Black Ops 3's or 2's but similar to Black Ops 2 I just don't see zombies being where it's at without the success of Black Ops 1. This is where we start a ton of brand new features added to the game that created the thirst for more that we would get later. To put in perspective we went from a game with 4 perks and 4 maps in World at War to a game with 8 perks and 8 maps in Black Ops 1. On top of this this is where easter eggs started to go absolutely bananas or like really even exist. It wouldn't be until Ascension where we got a mild easter egg but moving on to Call of the Dead, Shangri-La and finally Moon we got our first easter eggs and these in turn would spawn the insane love that the zombies community has for the franchise. Overall I'm aware this may not be the greatest Black Ops game critically speaking but this is my personal favorite and I think it's because this game came out during a time where COD was starting to get really hot and capitalizes on the situation at hand while also creating a subgenre of Call of Duty being the Treyarch titles. Black Ops 1 is just a very important chapter in the Call of Duty franchise and without it I don't know where the franchise would be today and that is why I believe Black Ops 1 is the greatest Black Ops game in the entire franchise. But what's your favorite Black Ops? Please let me know down below. So if you think any of this is a hot take go ahead let me have it I want to hear it. But anyways if you want to hear me talk about the entire history of mastery camos or the entire history of the third mode in Call of Duty go ahead and click on screen now. Join my discord if you're feeling crazy and if you like to leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike and thank you so much for watching.